M- Mal. Mm-hmm. So I just received a message, and apparently we are not allowed to endorse any presidential candidate this year. The, so this is this is a message from our employer, uh, uh, CIA. He quit pro quo with Trump. Sorry, got money. You are not allowed to endorse Kamala Harris this year. So yeah, um, Damn. Uh, in order to in order to secure our independence and um, trust from uh, our subscribers. By the way, subscribe and like. Um, we decided to stay um, indifferent uh, in these elections. To stay neutral and uh, yeah. This is how it goes. Uh, we are right outside now. of politics. Sorry for that. This project yeah, yeah. is not endorsing anybody ever. We are not about politics, not about anything. Uh, <laughs> vote for whoever you want. Uh, I I don't care actually if I actually, live or die. Actually, there's, there's you no, don't remember, yeah. but there was one presidential <laughs> candidate. Um, I think around ten years ago, really worthy of your guys's vote. His name was Vermin Supreme, and he was known for wearing a boot on his head. A legitimate candidate, so you know, might yeah. as well. Hmm. We can yeah. we can endorse we're, Vermin we're Supreme. We're still. Let me let me check with C I A. Yeah, he he said we are allowed to endorse him because uh, he didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. it's okay. We're okay. fine. So we're endorsing Vermin Supreme, everyone. Yeah. So Washington Post decided they are not endorsing anyone in these elections. Actually, like nine days. To the election, they made the decision to change their policy. Yeah. Something that is worthy of mentioning is that they always did. They only didn't do it for like, what, one time or two times before. But other than that, they are known. Uh, it's, it's not very, uh, you know, common for media to openly support a candidate anywhere in the world, really. But, you know, they were known for doing that. And this year, for some reason, a very unknown reason, impossible to imagine. They decided not to uh, not to do it. Yeah. Wait, so wait. Uh, their owner, which is you know in all normal media, owners are doing editorial decision. Their <laughs> owner intervened and asked not to. <laughs> uh, I mean, he so said the, he didn't, Mark. Come on. Yeah. Mark. Yeah. Yeah. But he said he, he didn't. Said so, he did. so 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 here's how it goes. Um, the owner intervened, they didn't endorse, then hundreds of thousands of their subscribers decided unsubscribe because they they are not a legit organization right now and not trustworthy since their billionaire owner <laughs> intervenes in their editorial decisions in such a significant way. Uh, so yeah, and uh, everyone was shocked, everyone was uh, outraged, and uh, this guy, <laughs> Jeff Bezos... You By know, the like, way, just yeah, this teeny tiny businessman, small our, business owner, I'd our, say. Yeah, our favorite, our second favorite billionaire in the United States, I guess. Um, so, yeah, and, and yeah, what, what happened simultaneously, and who could have known, um, Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos' uh, SpaceX, right, which sends rockets to the, to, to the skies or whatever, uh, science stuff. The company, which has 3.4 billions of contracts with United States government, executives of Blue Origin met with Donald Trump right after this decision by Washington Post, uh, which doesn't, which isn't quid pro quo. And how do we know that it isn't quid pro quo? Uh, Jeff Bezos told us ourselves. <laughs> So, like, <laughs> so something to, you know, <laughs> I can't. Like, so uh, Washington Post wrote an editorial, why, you know, they're not doing that. And then he had to write an op-ed, which is like an opposing editorial, uh, explaining, uh, you know, why everybody is wrong about him. And, and um, this opinion is called The Hard Truth. Americans don't trust the news media. <laughs> I, go, <laughs> I wonder what? why. <laughs> Crazy, right? It's Crazy insane. idea. So as as as, as uh, Twitter user and journalist Ken Klippenstein said, that that Bezos column is the funniest example of a boss thinking they can do the actual work I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, it's like the boss that earns three times your salary is uh, actually <laughs> like take like doesn't know shit and is trying to take part in the you know the the, the regular work. Ugh, God. So so he wrote that um, 
I would also like to be clear that no quid pro quo of any kind is at work here, right? I mean, I, I told you, I told you, neither campaign nor candidate was consulted or informed at any level or in any way about the decision. It was made, journalists knew about the decision, but whatever. It was made entirely internally. Dave Limp, the chief executive of one of my companies, Blue Origin, which has governmental contracts, met with former President Donald Trump on the day of our announcement. What a coincidence, right? I sighed when I found out because I knew it would provide ammunition to those who would like to frame this as anything other than a principal decision, right? I know. But the fact is, I didn't know about the meeting beforehand. Even Limp didn't know about it in advance. About the meeting, he just didn't know about a meeting with the possible future president and the most. Famous was, person in America right now. He wasn't in, in the hotel and he was searching for some room, right? And he like the hotel close to um, Central Park in New York. And he was searching t- for some room. He had a little backpack on his back and the CEO of Blue Region. And he just ran into Donald Trump and said, oh, wow, by the way. Yeah. Hi. Uh, how about like, our governmental contracts? Like, did, <laughs> so like, are you saying that Home Alone 2 Lost in New York was a documentary? Are you saying yeah, that? Yeah, that's, that's exactly what happened. Um, um, so there is uh, Jeff Bezos says there is no connection between it and our decision on presidential endorsements and any suggestion otherwise is false um, well so- if you say that and we know businessmen never fucking lie then I guess it's okay <laughs> Yeah, I feel embarrassed believe- right now, right? Yeah, because like I because this thought had was in my hand had that he made this because he had he was afraid of Donald Trump or had some negotiations. This thought in my head, I feel embarrassed for it right now. So before uh, I, you know, before we discuss this, and before uh, you know, I want to also come back to the evergreen bleating of the workers of the Washington Post who were complaining for days and days about how their subscribers are subscribing them and asking them not to, even though they kind of failed them at their duty. I want to, before that, address another thing. I want to address the original post, the original uh, opinion of Washington Post and them saying that they're not going to endorse anybody in 2024. So, you know, just a little discourse into history. Uh, officially, Washington Post has first endorsed a president in 1976. They endorsed Jimmy Carter. And, uh, you know, it, they have a long story of not endorsing Republicans and then whatever. But they have been doing this for a long, long, long time. Uh, and in their opinion, they state that they are coming back they're going back to their main job they have been doing this for 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 dozens of years so they essentially made it their job and now this year coincidentally they decide that their job is to provide through the newsroom nonpartisan news of for all Americans and thought-provoking reported views from their opinion team to help their readers make up their own minds. So they have been doing something since forever. Since forever. Since they first endorsed a Democratic, uh, Republican or otherwise candidate. And after years of doing that, they decided today that it's not their job. The, the, what the, the fuck have you been doing? No, what the, the fuck have you been doing for years? You didn't know what your job was. Jesus. No, no. The funniest thing is it, they decided it not like if they decided to do this six months ago, year ago or something like that, three months ago, decided, you know what? We are not doing this. The, the, there's a tradition we do. When you decide to do that uh, nine days before the election, right? Three days or two days before you su- you're you supposed to, to release your endorsement. that's that, that doesn't sound legit, right? It's not legit. Since we all understand this is not. Since 1976, they endorsed candidates. Yeah, Since yeah, so 1976. And today, it, in this time, a week ago, they decided, okay, we're going to stop. 
Yeah, it was it was a it, it was a sudden decision by their owner who is not supposed to intervene in their editorial process because you know what this is conflict of interest to intervene because he's very important person, one of the biggest billionaires in the United States. Uh, yeah. So and also he is he has actually uh, uh, according to different anonymous sources and it is uh, a widely known uh, matter uh, filmed by Mr. Jared Fogel in his movie The Dissident that when Mohammed bin Salman actually tried to reach out to Jeff Bezos back in 2018 to kind of stop the staff of the Washington Post uh, from covering the murder of Jamal Khashoggi who by the way MBS asked to you know be killed in their uh, consulate in Istanbul Istanbul right so when MBS asked Jeff Bezos to intervene Jeff Bezos said sorry my dude I can't I'm just the owner they have the freedom to do whatever I'm not interfering shit I'm a good guy you because you know who gives a shit about some guy being you know sawn apart somewhere in Turkey and you know he's just a journalist fucking whatever. Whereas when it comes to business interest and when it comes to Blue Origin and Elon Musk, ooh ooh, then it's for uh, you know it's way more important, right? Because you know Trump might yeah. win elections and what are you gonna do then? Jesus, the fucking hypocrisy, Mark. The fucking hypocrisy. Jesus Christ on a bicycle. So we decided to talk about this topic because we are actually experts in this because we are ukrainians and we saw how it happened in ukraine at some point of our history we saw how it happened in russia we know how democracy dies as in the slogan of washington post um and we know how sometimes the owners change or owners change their minds and um so actually some interests come into play and editorial like the, the the owners intervene in their editorial process and change everything and tell journalists what to um what to write and what not to write what to publish and what not to publish and then the the, the whole um the, the, the whole media loses legitimacy and people stop stop reading it stop subscribing it journalists leave uh create other media as well so the, this is the process which happens when democracy dies, the, 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 the process which happens in authoritarian countries all the time. And the fact that this happened in the United States, even before you had elections, is actually mind blowing. It's pretty fucking amazing. And also yeah. something again to address the thing I was previously saying. Well, first of all, we would be very unfair to say that, you know, Washington Post uh, staff did nothing. I mean, they didn't stage a mass walkout like they used to, but I mean, their top superstars and i mean carl bernstein and bob woodward immediately reacted to the whole thing saying it's stupid and disappointing and there were other people in the washington post who have resigned some have quit some have written very vocally about their you know disagreement with the, this policy but there were other people in there who were like and 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 people started up subscribing i mean obviously but there were people like i mean i'm gonna not going to say her name, but I'm going to quote her. Um, she actually asked people not to unsubscribe because she says it wouldn't hurt Bezos, it would hurt the paper. But then, you know what? This is how things work. Nobody wanted to hurt Bezos. <laughs> like, people don't think about Bezos when they say, yeah. you know, not to, like, endorse. They want to hurt the newspaper because the newspaper let them down. Yeah, they, they they don't even want to hurt, so to say. Why should they subscribe? So the the discussion about that is completely out of touch. I I was shocked when uh, Americans American journalists started discussing this. Oh, you you should hurt Bezos in this way and not in this way. You should unsubscribe from Amazon Prime or something like that. This is not <laughs> yeah, you the should, point. So unsubscribe from Blue Origin. Yeah, but <laughs> this is not this is not the point. So. Jeff Bezos is, is an oligarch, and I understand this is a new term for you guys. You should get <laughs> By the way, you used should to get that. used to it, yeah. Yeah, uh, so the, this is how it works with oligarchs. We in Ukraine, by the way, have a bunch of them. They all control all the major media. Um, and I mean, not is, anymore. We, Ever since the war, yeah, no. they control virtually nothing. But then a, a war had to fucking yeah. happen for that. To, so, you know, yeah, bear yeah, that yeah. in so, mind. So, so we know, Once we know they how... get the grip on these things, guys, they won't let go that easily because oh, it's they won't. super nice. Oh, they won't. Yeah. Because they control the media and they control what people think. So the, the, how it works. 
oligarchs have a lot of money, more money than you can ever spend. Um, and they buy media. So they buy a newspaper, a TV channel or something like that, and they control it. Um, and they don't buy it to earn money on that. This is not a business. They do business in other ways. They get governmental contracts. They get tax breaks. Uh, they get all sorts of deregulations to build their warehouses, to build their plants, to pollute your water or whatever. In exchange... To sell you crap. Yeah, and they and they sell and they and they spend little little tiny amount of money on the newspaper. I mean, like maybe it's hundred million dollars a year, maybe it's billion a year. Who cares? It's Jeff Bezos. Uh, it's like minus billion dollars a year for the newspaper. And people in the newspaper they're allowed to do different stuff, right? They can write about abortions. They can write about whatever they want. But when the owner needs them to do some reporting or do something, they come and say, do this, please, or do that. And like a lot of people in the, in, 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 in the newspaper cannot even, like, could not even know about that Jeff Bezos came somewhere, but they have their journalists, like, planted inside the uh, newspaper. They, ha they control the chief, um, I don't know, what's, what's the name? Um, chief editor of the newspaper, um, and yeah, th this is how it works. And, and, and at some point, they they get more and more and more. At some point, they start to control this uh, media wholly. So yeah, that's not a new like that's not journalism anymore. That's not that's and a I propaganda. Like to, yeah, and I would like to point out something that we're talking about the same very media that was not afraid to publish the leak rant papers about Vietnam War after the first pub part was already published by the New York Times and the Supreme Court actually threatened them with criminal action. And, you know, knowing all this, Washington Post back in the day still printed that crap, knowing that what it would end up like. And these are this is the same institution who in 2024 was scared to endorse a political candidate that, you know, just is reasonable because of their fear of a crazy guy who might or might not come to power. What is going to happen, guys? Like, I was just going to ask, you know, Jeff Bezos this question, if I could. But like, what are you going to do when Trump actually becomes president and is going to ask you for more favors in return? What are you going to do then? Are you going to let him like blackmail you till the end of your days? Is this what America is going to be looking like at this point? Is this... Is this the thing? Like, is this the, the whole point of it? Like, are you just going to let people scare you into doing things now? Because, well, if you are, then no surprise the way it turns out with Ukraine and Russia war now, isn't it? Like, this yeah, is yeah, but, it, but yet, yet again, yet again, we in Ukraine and, and we know Russia as well. We know Russia very well. We, we know every one of them, unfortunately. Uh, we know that he will. He will, he will bend his knee and he was, he will do anything Trump wants to get those contracts, to get those tax breaks, to get like anything he wants and not to be persecuted. Because do you know what happens to the oligarchs in the autocracy? <laughs> they get persecuted. Uh, so uh, like in Russian regime, right? How do you think Putin came into power, right? He came into power with the help of oligarchs who controlled Russia at the time. There was like six or seven main oligarchs who, who were controlling most of Russian resources. Um, and Putin came into power thanks to them. They were promoting him. They were giving him money. They were they bent the knee. But then at the same at some point, Putin decided that he doesn't need them. Uh, he doesn't need one of them. He destroyed him. He put him in jail. He doesn't need another one. He left Russia. Then the other one. He left Russia uh, as, as well. And then one by one. And right now, Russia has its oligarchs, right? Russia has its oligarchs. They're all new ones. They were Putin's judo uh, coaches. They were Putin's neighbors. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the Putin's messers. Uh, Putin's whatever. Those are Russian oligarchs now. And so if you think that, you know, Jeff Bezos will just bend the knee and you, and he will stay as like the main billionaire in chief and Elon Musk will bend the knee and will stay his, his billionaire in chief. No, 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 no. That's not how it happens. You will have, uh, Laura Trump or whoever, like Trump Jr., Trump Jr., 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 Trump Jr., 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 and then, and then someone else. 
And that's what and you, you will Kushner, get as oligarchs. Probably. Yeah. And Jared Kushner. Also, I would like to address another dumpster fire that started all this. So the Washington Post wasn't the first media not to endorse a candidate. I guess it's like a frenzy. New York. I mean, and not the last. The other media followed suit soon. You know, there's this whole war between, you know, who, like the economist, who decided to endorse Kamala, and then there are other media who don't endorse. It's a whole thing. But Washington Post wasn't the first one. I really enjoyed the idiocy around the Los Angeles Times thing because they were the first ones not to endorse a candidate. And the story behind that is hilarious. Again, which is very symptomatic of what's happening in the States now. So the owner of LA Times decided, I mean, and that was very different from the Washington Post situation where they were like trying to defend themselves saying, you know, this is actually our opinion. This is the owner's opinion. This is the editorial room's opinion, all of that. So the Los Angeles Times uh, owner decided not to endorse presidential candidate. And he just said that, you know, he trusts his editorial board, blah, 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 to do it. But then his daughter, <laughs> so his name um, is... Um, Patrick Soon Xiong and his daughter, Nika Soon Xiong, actually wrote online that the reason that LA Times did not support Kamala was because Kamala uh, supports Israel in the Israel Hamas war. Uh, so, and she actually said that on behalf of the newspaper. Because she's the daughter of the owner. And she said that. And it, you know, aggravated the workers of the media more than the, you know, lack of endorsement. That they actually had to go online themselves and denounce that. So the editorialist editor and then other veteran journalists of LA Times actually had to go online and say that, no, this isn't the reason. We did not, you know, do this because if she didn't do or did something we reviewed both and all of that. And anyway, what the fuck is that even like? And did, I guess American public just got, I mean, there were some unsubscriptions also. So, you know, uh, the Washington Post isn't the only uh, newspaper in America who suffered from, you know, doing stupid stuff. But like, this is the world we live in now where the daughter of the owner, she's a, she's an activist and politician, by the way. <laughs> Good I mean, but she she's not even she doesn't even work there. I mean, like it's stupid. She said, "Yeah, my dad told our property, the media you guys trust, not to endorse one of the candidates because she endorses this country that I hate because of, I support the other country that is fighting this country, and this is why I do it." And then the workers of the media, actually, you know, who just decided to listen to their owner, I guess, which does not do injustice or serve, but whatever. They had to go out and be like, no, no, actually, don't listen to her because she doesn't, she doesn't even go here. <laughs> and then, I mean, what the hell is this? What the hell is this? It's just yeah, it's stupid. I don't... And, and yeah, Washington I mean... Post decided to, you know, be similar to that. They decided to, you know what? LA Times did it. We're going to do the same. Like, it's just stupid. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I understand uh, people need some, like, a lot of people don't want to get their information from TikTok, right? They don't want to get their information from uh, some weird YouTube podcasters, right? Uh, especially those without sure microphones or something. Um, <laughs> I understand that. And we need Washington Post reporting, actually, right? So many good things came out from Washington Post reporting. And we need New York Times reporting because this is an institution which has resources, which has um, ability to hire good journalists. But what we need from this, these institutions is credibility. And uh, what we see during the last, we Ukrainians see during the last several years is absolute negligence. And we can't even, we can't even explain it, right? So this one is simple, right? This is just pure corruption or something. But before that, like what, what the fuck was New York Times doing with so reporting simple. from it Ukraine, right? Pure corruption. I love this. Yeah. Actually, so, yeah. You if, know if, what? If, if, if you, yeah, yeah, if, if you, like, just lost words, if you're a journalist uh, from this, uh, like, from big media, from big newspapers, et cetera, et cetera, you should, like, sound, you should not be afraid. You should sound alarm when you see that something is wrong, right? And you should fight for credibility of these institutions because subscribers obviously can't, because people who read this obviously can't. 
like we do uh, a lot of people do subscribers do they sound alarm it doesn't work journalists who work there should sound alarm journalists who work there should do walkouts because new york times decided that they need only russian voices there or something like that not like you know ukrainians um in hysterical rants all over the internet you know like that's this is just the only thing I'd like to say, and by the way, this is a joke, just, you know, it's a joke, but nevertheless, it appears the only media that has decided to stick third to their values and who are to their readers and viewers the most, you know, full of integrity, very integral and, you know, very transparent in everything they do is Fox News. You know what? <laughs> Everybody, every media should be more like Fox News. I mean, they are not lying to anybody. They're like, they support, you know, Trump and MAGA and they say crazy stuff all the time. They don't pretend to be something they're not. Fox News has so much integrity. It's crazy right now. And so by the you way, they guys have a lot should of be trust. more like, yeah. yeah, and they have a lot of trust. <laughs> you guys should try to be more like Fox News and less like no, Washington Post. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> no, but come on. Come on. It's true. It's true. I mean, you cannot, like, in all honesty, can you uh, accuse Fox News of, uh, you know, of lying to their viewers? They don't. No, yes. they don't. They, no, they. No, but, I mean, like they do that all the time. They no, they lost they the lawsuit. They, they, they translate <laughs> and transmit lies, but they believe in those lies. They are, you know. No, they they actually very... they actually no 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 no. They actually lost the lawsuit, uh, almost a billion dollars, because they they spread the lies which they didn't believe. Right. So but they, that was just like once. Come on. No, I mean, like because because we knew just because, because Washington this, Post just didn't because we had lose. The lawsuit. A lawsuit doesn't mean they didn't do it, okay? It doesn't mean yeah, that no, Washington they, they, Post they, never they, translated something they didn't believe in. Yeah, no. You, I it, mean, no, like, they did just now. That endorsement, half of the staff didn't support it. Yeah, I mean, don't try don't try to do this both side things. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Be like Fox News. Stick Be like to Fox one News. side. <laughs> Thank you very much, and uh, I hope to see you next time. And hope uh, um, when when we see you next time, this fucking shit show hopefully will be over. Yeah, and, and not and we're not talking about our show. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about your fucking show. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna, uh, have a good this time is gonna be there. Done, and we're either gonna be living. I mean, this is gonna be really crappy anyway. So. <laughs> Just uh, let's hope we're going to see each other uh, next week. And, yeah, most uh, importantly, do your job. Do what you're supposed to do. And uh, see you next week. Bye. Bye.